اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورت الفلق اینڈ سورت الناس بوتھ اف دی سورز ور ریویلڈ ٹوگیدر اینڈ دے ار نون ایز دا معوذتین میننگ دوز سورز تھرو وچ وی سیک پروٹیکشن اگینسٹ ایوری ایول The virtues of these surahs are mentioned in many ahadith. And mainly, these surahs are a means of seeking protection against every kind of harm. So the one who recites them, then that person is saved from every kind of evil and every kind of harm, major and minor, big and small, apparent and hidden, present and future. visible and invisible every kind of harm the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would recite these two surahs in the morning and in the evening he would recite them after his prayers and he would also recite them before going to sleep and these surahs are also recited as cure for magic these surahs are therefore very unique And they are a special favor, a special gift of Allah Azza wa Jalla upon all of us. Uqba ibn Amir reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Shall I not teach you surahs, the likes of which were neither revealed in the Torah, nor in the Zabur, nor in the Furqan? Unique surahs, the likes of which were never revealed before. He said, not a night shall pass on you except that you must recite them. What are these surahs? Surahs Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, and An-Nas. So this means that no matter how tired we are in the night, and no matter how sleepy we are, we must recite these surahs. Uqba ibn Amir also reported that He said, I came to the Prophet ﷺ while he was riding his animal. So I put my hand on his foot. And I said, O Messenger of Allah, please teach me Surah Hud. The Prophet ﷺ is where? He's riding his animal. And they're in a journey. And Uqba bin Amir comes to him, puts his hand on the foot of the Prophet ﷺ. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, please teach me Surah Hud. Look at his eagerness to learn. The Prophet ﷺ said, You will not read any surah in the Qur'an that is more eloquent than Surah Al-Falaq. Surah Al-Falaq, the most eloquent, baligh surah of the Qur'an. Ibn Abiz al-Juhani said that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said to me, O oh, Ibn Abiz, shall I not teach you the best words of the Awud? تعوذ, to seek refuge. So shall I not tell you the best words that you can seek Allah's protection through? So he said, yes. The Prophet ﷺ said, these are the two surahs, Al-Falaq and An-Nas. The best words of تعوذ. The Prophet ﷺ also said that these surahs, Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq and An-Nas, will suffice you against everything. Meaning they will protect you from every kind of harm. This is why it has been reported that the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge against the evil eye of people and jinn. But when these surahs were revealed, he began reciting them. And he left the other things that he would read. So these surahs will suffice you against every harm. every kind of harm. So much so that once a scorpion bit the Prophet ﷺ while he was praying. So after the Prophet ﷺ ended the prayer, he asked for some water and for some salt. And then he began rubbing the water and the salt on the area where the scorpion had bit him. And as he rubbed his hand, he was also reciting Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. So they will suffice you from every kind of evil. And in these two surahs, we are basically taught to seek refuge against shar, 
against evil. And Ibn al-Qayyim said that there are two types of evil. There are two types of evil. The first type is sins and their consequences. Meaning the evil that we bring upon our own selves. Because of the words we say, or the actions we do, or the thoughts we entertain. This is the evil that we bring upon ourselves. We are the cause behind it. The second type of evil is that which is external, meaning the source of that evil is what? It's external. Meaning, it is coming from the other creation. And that creation could be mukallaf and ghair mukallaf. Mukallaf, meaning those who will be held accountable. So for instance, people and jinn, shaitan, the evil that can reach us from other people or from jinn. And the other can be from creation that is ghair mukallaf, meaning that will not be held accountable. So for example, an animal, an animal bites us, or some creature, germs, even rays, viruses, living, non-living things, the creation that surrounds us, that can also harm us. Now if you think about it, some evil is such that we can see it. There are certain dangers, certain harms out there that we can see them, we can identify them. And then there are other forms of evil that we cannot see. We don't even know. Like for example, there could be a glass of water and it is clearly not clean. So you see some things in the water. You see the evil. But then there could also be a glass of water and the water is completely clear. You don't see the bacteria in it. You don't see the harmful substances in it. So you are unaware of it. So there is evil that we know of, we can see, and there is evil that we cannot see. We are not able to protect ourselves. So for example, even shaitan. Can we see shaitan? No. So then, how do we protect ourselves when we are surrounded by things that can potentially harm us in ways that we cannot even expect, through means that we cannot even see? How do we protect ourselves? By seeking the protection of who? Their creator, their Lord. Allah, Al-Ahad, Al-Samad. When we seek refuge against evil, then we are seeking refuge against evil that is harming us at present. So for instance, a person could be suffering from a certain illness. They could be having certain thoughts that are constantly bothering them. So basically evil that a person is presently afflicted with. Some harm that he is presently suffering from. So when we seek Allah's protection against shah, we are asking Allah to relieve us from that evil, to take that shah away from us. But when we seek Allah's protection against evil, we're also seeking His protection against evil that may harm us in the future, that may come about in the future. So when we seek Allah's protection, we seek His protection from every evil that is present now and that could come about in the future. In Surah Al-Falaq, in particular, we seek refuge against evil that is hidden from us, that we don't see. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل say أعوذ I seek refuge I seek protection برب الفلق with Lord of the daybreak I seek the protection of رب الفلق فلق is from the root letters فا لام قاف and فلق means الصبح it is understood as the morning why? Because literally, the word falaq means a split or a fissure, to cleave something. And this is how the morning comes about, the break of dawn. Faliqul isbah, we learn in the Quran. 
the cleaver of the morning. Meaning, the darkness is broken, the darkness of the night is broken, it is torn, and through the crack, the morning light comes in. So, al-falaq is al-subh, the daybreak. But if you think about it, everything comes into existence after what? After breaking or splitting. Meaning, something breaks, something splits, and something emerges. So, for example, the shell breaks and the chick comes out, right? Or the shell breaks and the seed comes out. So it breaks and then the creation comes out. So this is why the word falaq is also understood as al-khalq, the creation. So qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, say I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak or in the Lord of the entire creation. The Lord of Falaq is the Lord of everything. And specifically morning, because morning, the emergence of light, what does it mean? That darkness has been removed. Darkness has gone. And that morning came out, why? Because someone made it. Rabb, Rabbul Falaq, he made it. He is the one who created the morning as a result of which darkness was removed. So all darknesses will dispel when we take refuge in Allah, our Lord. When we turn to Him, then and only then can all darknesses go away. Whether those darknesses are of ignorance or of doubt, of sadness, of confusion, whatever it may be. Because Allahu waliyu ladina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-zulumati ila nur Allah is the friend, the protector of those who believe and He brings them out of darkness and He takes them towards light. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq He is the one who removes the terror of the one who is terrified. He is the one who removes the sadness of the one who is sad. He is the one who removes the fear of the one who is afraid. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Min from شَرِّ Evil of Which evil? مَا خَلَقِ of that which he has created. Meaning, whatever creation that Allah has created, then I turn to my Lord to protect me from the evil of that creation. What is it that Allah has created? What is it that Allah has created? Everything. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Allah is the creator of everything. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَكِيلٍ And he is the disposer of affairs over everything also. So think about any fear, any worry, any concern that you may have. What frightens you? What worries you? Is it a person? Is it something that may happen in the future? Is it the fear of an illness? Is it some fear of poverty? Is it loneliness? Bring to mind Darkness, bring to mind all of your worries, no matter what it may be, and say, Min Sharri Ma Khalaq, I seek the protection of Allah from the evil of whatever that He has created. I seek Allah's protection against the evil of everything. And the thing is that, Every creature, it has some kind of evil associated with it. Like for example, wind. Where on the one hand, when the wind blows, the gentle breeze comes, and we feel all fresh. The same wind also brings massive clouds with heavy snowfall and freezing temperatures. Right? Lightning, where it looks very beautiful, the sound of it frightens us. Its brightness can also harm us. 
rain, where it can be so beneficial, it can also be harmful. The ground that we stand on, that we live on, that we walk on, that we sit on, that same ground where on one hand, it's what we live on, on the other hand, it can also shake and quake. So, min sharri ma khalaq. The thing is that we don't know what evil there may be in something. And it's not necessary that that particular creature is inherently evil. No, it could be evil for us. It could be evil for us in a certain situation. Like for example, a paper. Paper is not evil. Right? But I'm sure you've had a paper cut. Why? Is it because that paper is evil? No. It just became a source of evil for you at that time. That just because it rubbed against your finger in a certain way, at a certain speed, instead of just rubbing your skin, it actually cut through your skin. So it became sharp for you. And the thing is that anything can be a source of harm and hurt for us. There is potential harm in so many things. So, min sharri ma khalaq. The one who takes refuge in Allah, what is he doing? He's saying that, oh Allah, you protect me from every evil and every potential evil that may be in any creature that you have created. So when you give yourself in Allah's protection, what does it mean? What does it mean? You are trusting Him and relying upon Him. Then you need not worry. And you need not have any fear in your heart. Min sharri ma khalaq. Now, the evil of three things is mentioned. Specifically, min sharri ma khalaq, this is general. Evil that can come from any creature. But now, specifically, three types of sharr we are taught to seek refuge from. What are they? Ghasiq, the knight. Sahir, the magician. And Hasid, the envier. Wamin and from, meaning and I seek refuge from. Sharri, evil of, ghasiqin, of darkness. Ghasiq, ghayn seen qaf. Ghasiq means night. Why does it mean night? Basically, ghasiq is Al-Barid, meaning that which is cold. So for example, we learn about Ghassaq. Ghassaq, intensely cold and bitter. So Ghassaq, the night is called Ghassaq. Why? Because it is cooler compared to the day. In the daytime, no matter how cold it is, just sunlight itself can create such warmth. Right? But in the night, what happens? It's colder. So, Ghasiq is the night. Secondly, Ghasiq is also understood as the moon. Because the Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha radiallahu anha once, that is ta'idhi billahi min sharri. That seek refuge with Allah from its evil. فَإِنَّهُ الْغَاسِقْ إِذَا وَقَبْ This is a hadith from At-Tirmidhi. So, وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ See, and I seek Refuge with Allah from the evil of darkness, of the night, إِذَا وَقَبْ When it settles. وَقَبَ وَقَفْبَ Which means to enter. So as the night enters. Or وَقَبَ means to cover with darkness. So as the night enters and covers everything with its darkness. وَقَبَ also is to prevail. So as the night enters, covers everything with its darkness and prevails. Just doesn't go away. Sometimes for so many hours. Sometimes the night is so long. وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ And if you think about it, as the night comes in, we have been instructed to take children indoors. Why? Who comes out as the night comes in? Shayateen. They spread through the land. And not just shayateen, because it is dark. There are so many things that could be out in the night, but they're hidden from us. We don't see them. And because we don't see them, we cannot protect ourselves from them. 
And in the night, there's so many animals even that go for hunting. So many nocturnal creatures that come out. And they could be harmful. They could harm us. Even criminals, they go out in the night to commit their crimes. Even we learned that the hypocrites would plot in the night. And what happens inside the house? Is there any shar in the night? What happens typically? The shar of the screen for hours and hours. Because of which Risha is neglected. And because of which Fajr is also neglected. وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وقب. You see, in the night, we sleep. And when we're sleeping, we don't see what's coming towards us. We don't hear the evil that may be approaching us. So when we don't see it, we don't hear it, we can't get up and we can't run away from it and we cannot protect ourselves from it. So then, when we're sleeping, who can protect us? Who can preserve us? Who can keep us safe? Allah. So seek refuge with Allah against these evils before going to sleep. وَمِن شَرِّ and from the evil of النفاثات, of the blowers, fil uqad in the knots, meaning those who blow into the knots. Nafathat is a plural of the word nafatha. Nafatha fa'ala, meaning one who nafatha a lot. So either it is she who nafatha a lot. Or someone who nafatha a lot. What is nafatha? Nafatha is to blow with the mouth. But it is to blow in such a way that a little bit of spit also comes out. And fil uqad, plural of the word uqda, uqda is a knot, so uqad knots. And this is referring to witchcraft, magic. Because when the sorcerers, they perform their magic, how do they do that? They will take, for example, the victim's hair or nails or anything like that, and then they will tie knots on it with a thread. And as they're tying knots on it, they say certain things to please the shayateen, to seek the help of the devils, and then they will blow on those knots. Nafathat fil ruqad. Say that I seek Allah's protection from the evil of those who blow into knots. And this evil, the evil of magic, is also very common, unfortunately, where people seek the help of shaitan to harm others. Even the Prophet ﷺ was harmed by magic. People did magic on him. His enemies did magic on him. So the comb was found. The comb on which they had tied certain knots and so the Prophet ﷺ recited these surahs as he untied those knots. So, وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And the third shar is, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ And from the evil of the hasid, of the envier. إِذَا حَسَدَ When he envies. Hasid is the one who has hasad. What is hasad? To be jealous. What is jealousy? To be upset. Why? On seeing someone with a blessing. That someone has a blessing and they're enjoying it. They have been granted that honor. So we feel anger in our heart. We get upset and we get irritated. This is the feeling of hasad. And then it doesn't stop there. A person desires that the blessing that the other person has been given should be taken away from them. So hasad is a feeling. It's a feeling. Whether a person acts upon it or not. But it is such a feeling that a person cannot help but act upon it. Which is why when a person has hasad in their heart, then what happens? They harm the victim with what? With their words? With their hands, and even with their eyes, evil eye. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدَ Meaning, O oh Allah, protect me from the envy 
of the person who feels envy, who wants that my blessing should be taken away. So, O oh Allah, protect me from becoming the target of someone's jealousy. Because jealousy is evil. It is evil. But it's amazing how sometimes we want others to be jealous of us. We have been taught over here to seek refuge with Allah. That, oh Allah, protect me from the envy of other people. So does it make sense then to say things or do things in order to make other people feel envious? It's like a person is inviting harm. Envy is shar, it is evil. Why is it evil? Because the one who is jealous wants that the blessing of the other is taken away from them. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حسد. Now the thing is that in the surah, we are seeking whose protection? Allah's protection. Against what evil? Every kind of evil. Because evil is of so many different types. And it can be all around us in so many different forms. And when you look at all of these evils, you find yourself so weak. So weak, unable to protect yourself. So then who is safe? The one who gives himself in Allah's protection. Then he is safe. He is safe from شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ And also شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ